Hello, my friends, and welcome back. So today I'm going to do a quick introduction to JASP and the visual modeling module. Well, actually, I'm going to do a series of videos on that. But today, uh, this video, I'm going to look at just the univariate distributions. So here is uh, the JASP interface. And I have opened a data set called Paranormal Dataset. Uh, to do so, uh, you can download the link in the description, and then you would go to Open, Computer, and then Browse, and then wherever it is on your desktop, that's where you select it, and that sort of thing. So that'll uh, um, put it into JASP, and then you can start doing some statistical analysis on it. So I'm going to talk about these variables. Convic conviction is uh, how much conviction you have that... Uh, there are paranormal things that actually exist. Uh, fear is how afraid you are of being kidnapped by aliens. Time is how much time you spend uh, investigating the paranormal. Kidnapped is have you been kidnapped by aliens. And then uh, experiences type is just a survey that asks them what type of experiences have you had with the paranormal. Eerie feeling, I saw a ghost, I saw a UFO. I don't remember all the different kinds that there are, but we'll see that in the plots here in a minute. And then the income is um, they're self-categorized. How much do you make? And their age is their age. Um, obviously, we have a lot more precision than we need. Who says that they are 40.4545 years old, people? Nobody. Um, so these are actually simulated data, but they illustrate some of the things that... Uh, we talk about in my approach to teaching statistics. So uh, once you get into here, I've actually already installed it, but if you were to install the visual modeling module, you would just click on this plus sign at the top right, and it shows all the different modules that are available, and the visual modeling one is the one that I wrote. And it looks like it is in alphabetical order, so you could always look at the bottom, unless somebody comes up with a z-test module or something. So now we can access the module, and there are four sub-modules within the module. I'm going to say module a lot today. My apologies. One is Flexplot, which is dedicated to just visualization. It does no statistical estimates whatsoever. Linear modeling is um, just linear models like ANOVAs, t-tests, regressions, except we do it all within the linear modeling approach. We'll talk more about that in a future video. And then mixed modeling, uh, that is for mixed modeling. In the future, I'm going to revise my uh, multivariate videos, and then we'll cover that one as well as the generalized linear modeling. Long story short, this is for when you have repeated measures, data, or some sort of clustering effect going on. And generalized linear model is when you're trying to model something that is not normally distributed, like uh, the probability of somebody dying or... Um, the number of times somebody gets arrested or something like that. So let's go ahead and start with Flexplot. And since today is the uh, univariate visualization video, we're just going to look at some univariate visualizations. So the Flexplot mo module is super easy. So if you wanted to, for example, visualize uh, their conviction, again, this is uh, how much conviction do you have about the existence of the para paranormal? All you would do is select that variable, click the over arrow into the dependent variable, and it will default to plotting a histogram. And so we see from this that conviction is bimodal, that people seem to either believe that it exists or they don't, and then there's some variability within those different things. So uh, we know from this that we might have some issues with modeling in the future, uh, but uh, not necessarily because the assumption is about the residuals, as we will talk about when we talk about diagnostics. Uh, we could also look at, whoa, fear. Let's see how that looks. So again, this is fear. Uh, how afraid are you of being kidnapped by aliens? I believe it was intended to be a 0 to 100 scale. And not surprisingly, the vast majority of people are not afraid of being kidnapped by aliens. That's not terribly shocking. Um, it's not one of the biggest threats that we have to live with, which is fortunate. And then if we wanted to look at time, again, this is time spent investigating the paranormal. Uh-oh, we got something funky going on here. 
So we see that every single person in the data set reported 6,000, I think that's hours within a year or something like that. So every single person spent 6,000 hours investigating the paranormal. Um, and this is exactly why we do univariate plots, so that we could say, huh, something funky is going on here. It seems highly unlikely that every single person spent the exact same amount of time. So this would um, invite us to start looking at, okay, what else is going on here? And by the way, this was intentional when I created this data. Actually, no, I take that back. It was accidental. I meant to have an outlier where somebody spent 6,000 hours, and instead of changing a couple of observations to 6,000, I changed all of them, and I thought, hey, that's actually something that could happen in real data analysis, that uh, some mistake was made and everybody got the same value. So now let's look at kidnapped. Have you been kidnapped by aliens? Uh, almost 1,000 people say yes. Almost nobody says no. So if you think about that, uh, that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense that the vast majority of people have been kidnapped by aliens unless you happen to be survey, surveying people from like a convention or a support group for those who've been kidnapped by aliens. And maybe those people who are no are the spouses of those who actually stuck with them because they think they're nuts or whatever. Uh, so uh, I would guess that somebody flipped the labels in this data set and again, this is why we do univariate visualizations, so that we could say, is there something else going on here? Is there something wrong with our data set? So that is kidnapped. Let's do experiences type. And so we have the number of times people said they saw a ghost, or they had an eerie feeling, or they saw a UFO, they heard a voice, or they felt a presence watching. Not watching, but watching. I wonder if that's cut off. Uh, to get back to the data set. Oh, that's right. You click this arrow. Uh, I'm going to see. It. Oh, no, I did not say watch in. So it's just got cut off and that can happen. You can always uh, extend this and I believe, yep, there we go. Now we get all the labels, which is really cool. So um, again, anytime I look at a graphic, I ask myself, what does this mean? Does this actually make sense? And so I'm seeing something kind of funky going on here that the vast majority of people have seen a ghost. Well, not the majority. So uh, I think there's a thousand in the data set. I don't know, maybe this is 350, 375. But the largest proportion of people said they saw a ghost. Um, that seems a little odd. Whereas an eerie feeling, I would think that most people had had felt an eerie feeling. That's kind of a common or even feeling a presence watching. That I would think is pretty common, but I don't think it's very common to see a ghost. Um, by the way, I have seen a ghost. If you are interested in hearing the story, leave a comment in the comment section to let me know and I will tell the story. Uh, anyway, uh, saw a UFO. I've also seen a UFO and I could talk about that too. Um, yeah, I swear I am an objective scientist that only believes in empirical things, and yet I've seen a ghost and I've seen UFO. Pretty cool. Uh, heard a voice and presence watching. watching. So anyway, um, some of this makes sense. It makes sense that less people would see a UFO than people who had had an eerie feeling. I suspect her hearing a voice and seeing a UFO, I don't know. I, I Who knows? So something happened here where I suspect the labels got mixed up, unless, of course, there's something unique about this particular population that you would expect this sort of thing. But for the most part, I don't think that is the case. Let's go ahead and look at the, the last variable, age. Move that over into the dependent variable column. And what do we get here? We've got uh, something that looks okay, except we've got uh, probably one observation that is zero years old, and then one observation that is 120 years old. Now that's kind of wonky. So we got um, a person included in our survey that happened to be 120 years old. That's pretty remarkable, uh, and would cause you to question the integrity of the data. Likewise, uh, you have somebody who's zero, zero years old, so these are self-reports. So some baby is getting on a computer and answering questions self-reportedly. 
Um, that seems highly unlikely. So something funky is happening here. Otherwise, um, things look pretty okay. I think when I simulated these data, I envisioned this was like at a Comic-Con sort of convention. So you would expect that sort of distribution of age that it's not very likely you're going to see a bunch of 80-year-olds at a Comic-Con convention, except maybe William Shatner. And uh, you're going to probably see a spike in people who are in their late 30s, that sort of thing. Um, uh, now let me show some of the options that we could do. A lot of these aren't actually going to make any sort of difference whatsoever. Uh, the only thing that we can change is the plot controls, uh, I'm sorry, the theme. So it defaults to the JASP theme to be consistent with the rest of JASP, but you could also choose a black and white theme, um, which looks like that. And where did these names come from? These come from ggplot. If you know about ggplot, if not, don't worry about it. They're just names. We've got minimal, which I think it doesn't, yeah, it gets rid of the axes. It still does these little grid lines. Uh, we've got classic, which looks pretty cool, I guess. And then we've got the dark theme, which is hard for me to look at. I think it's kind of ugly, but whatever. So this has been a brief introduction to uh, doing univariate visualizations in JASP. In the next video, I'm going to show uh, bivariate visualizations, both in the Flexplot module as well as in the Linear Modeling module. So until then, I will see you then. Boy, that was an awkward way to close. Peace out.